Welcome to the Hi-Fi of Customer Experience. Podcast brought to you by cxmlab.com. It will be a short, sharp and interactive podcast with some of the best minds in the business and we will take five key questions. Today we will have a chat with Anjali Malhotra, Chief Customer Marketing Digital and IT Officer at Aviva India, besides being an angel investor, mentor and a coach. Welcome Anjali. Thank you Neeraj, it's a pleasure to be here. It's great connecting with you Anjali. Anjali CXM Lab is a platform to express thoughts, ideas and tools that drive customer experience and will enable marketers, CIOs, CTOs and CDOs to think, reflect and make the right choices for their brands and organizations. We are currently in the midst of a cathartic transition for life, business and marketing. Most senior marketing professionals come from an era where there were limited media options. The customer journeys were pretty predictable and linear. Brand loyalties were high and the concept of a great customer experience was practiced by a few niche brands. The rules have now been redefined and are probably in the process of being rewritten. We now live in a world where infinite connections and sources of information and influence exist. The rules of marketing have evolved before, but now they are being changed forever. This podcast will engage with senior industry leaders who are at the forefront of this battle for the consumer's mind and wallet. Undoubtedly, customer experience will drive this transformation. Thank you, Anjali. I would like to start with the first question. What, according to you, are the three big changes that life insurance industry will go through post the COVID-19 crisis? We're going through unprecedented change, as you said, Neeraj. And yes, life is never going to be the same again. A whole lot will transform, not just during this period, but in the post-COVID era. Uh, we will have to uh, accept a whole new normal. In the insurance industry per se, uh, if I was to name three things, uh, here's what they are. Number one, the need for health and protection products will rise. Uh, how fragile health is and how important well-being is, is a learning that we've all acquired in the last few weeks, uh, looking at the devastation that COVID-19 has caused around the globe. I think people have woken up to the need for insurance, especially to protect their health and, and, and that of their loved ones. So clearly that's something that we see. And when uh, th this protection products will not just be plain term and critical illness, but also pandemic covers, something new that we've not seen before in insurance. Yes. Secondly, the need for digital advice. Uh, social distancing and the lack of movement have made sure that we are all confined to our homes. In an industry which is otherwise totally dependent upon face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, advice and conversations in order to build trust and help people invest, um, clearly that's taken a beating and digital is the way to go. Uh, the industry will have to learn ways and mechanisms of being able to close sales, win customer engagement and trust digitally and a whole new mechanism of such engagement tools is emerging. Some are on the, on the way, but they're going to get dialed up. I see new things coming in, which are, which will enable video advice, robo advisory and so on. And we'll talk about it more as we go. Uh, the third big thing I see shifting is online sales. Uh, in the insurance industry today, the proportion of pure online sales where customer himself goes and does like e-commerce is a very, very small proportion. It's still a single digit contribution. I see that expanding and people taking the initiative to just log on to a website and uh, just complete the entire uh, buy of an insurance, even life insurance product themselves. It's today a fairly complex process given the regulatory environment and, uh, you know, heavy documentation that it involves. However, that all is set to simplify in a post-COVID era. Mm. Great. Anjali, from a customer segmentation and journey point of view, how does mm. India behave differently from the rest of the world, say, in the context of habits, beliefs, value systems about money and insurance? And what are the kind of new patterns that will emerge, if any, in India? specifically towards savings, investments, and insurance. 
India is a market that loves its cash. We all know that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's the place where most of our funds have been lying liquid. Mm-hmm. The amount of money that lies in our banks and fixed deposits uh, is, is completely different from that than any other part of the world. Uh, partly it's also because the kind of interest rates we enjoy, but partly, mostly it's because we like to have liquidity around us. Um, and that's something that we're going to continue to see for some time because in a bearish scenario that we've now gone in, people tend to hold on to cash. Yes. And uh, given the current scenario, which is where we've seen markets tumble, uh, people are holding on to decisions and kind of holding on to cash. And also investment decisions have been kind of on a wait and watch mode. Yes. When it comes to saving products or investments, uh, India steers towards more, uh, you know, at least in the last few years have been fairly market driven. There has been a fair amount of investment in investment products, be it mutual funds, ULIPs and so on. And we've been gregarious in those decisions. However, uh, given the tumult situation, guarantees would rule at least for some time. Uh, people would like the comfort of knowing that my principle is safe. And I know what I would get back and when. Um, and so, therefore, traditional products with a certain guarantee of return uh, mm. would seem to at least be the order of the day in the short term. However, in the long run, uh, as the markets improve, ULIPs will come back and again, you know, start to dominate the market. So, you know, it is going to be a bit of a swivel, uh, but we do do see that change happening over a period of time. Uh, thirdly, when it comes specifically to insurance products, uh, you know, agents have been low on risk taking ability. Um, and, uh, you know, partly that's the reason why the lockdown has been so successful. Uh, that's overall our nature towards the way we look at risk. Uh, mm. But I think the way uh, it would change going forward is that one would realize that life does come with a huge amount of risk and we live with it irrespective of whether we recognize it or not. Mm. And situations such as this help us accept that fact and not just to be prepared for it. Yeah. And therefore, the importance of insurance, the importance of protection. Now, how India is different from the rest of the world is that our contribution of protection is actually far lower than in, in all other markets. We are a very, very investment-driven market. For us, money is all about the growth of money rather than, you know, term where people still tend to believe that, you know, if, if it's something I've given out, then it should come back to me at some point. Yeah. And that's really not how term operates. Yeah. But I think people will come to terms with that and accept more protection going forward. So those are the kind of changes I see. Great. Great. Uh, I kind of picked up a phrase from you. The people in India will come to term with term plans, basically. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what kind of marketing strategies will separate the winners from the losers, say, over a two-year period going forward? So, I'd say once uh, in a post-COVID s- scenario, brands will need to be more empathetic, for one. Uh, clearly, today's consumers have a deep need for comfort and security. You know, social distancing is not necessarily emotional distancing. And marketers need an empathetic playbook with messages of, care, protection, courage, and even humility built in, not necessarily a buy now sort of a call for action, which can seem to be opportunistic. Uh, I, we always feel it's better to make an impact rather than just be part of the noise. Secondly, it's about social responsibility. Um, the, today's new age consumers, especially the millennials and Gen Z, uh, steer towards brands that have a, a, a socially responsible agenda woven into their very uh, core. Now, brands that are conscious of that and are able to build a very strong, articulate, um, you know, uh, social responsibility mission and are able to exhibit that through their communication and their initiatives will certainly win in the longer term. Third, it's about trust. Uh, trust and deep connections is really at the heart of marketing. And brands that need to now really rise to the occasion and exhibit their commitment to customers. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've seen all core customer processes uh, and life cycle needs have been fully maintained and serviced, irrespective mm-hmm. of the lockdown, even through remote and work from home scenarios. I think it's amazing how the human spirit has risen to the occasion and, uh, you know, shown that commitment and that's the time you build trust. 
that's the time you and, and trust is for keeps and and you really enjoy that in times to come yeah. uh fourthly obviously it will be about personalization uh, you know you're a data driven person you've come from that world, part of the world and who better than you would understand the criticality of customization and being driven by uh, data and insights uh, and building that as a core part of the marketing strategy uh, to build personalized relevant communication and offerings to customers and lastly it's going to be about integrated marketing i think even till date uh, most media agencies would concur with me that um, mass media digital still continue to operate in silos uh, not only that uh, you know even our customer contact touch points uh, aren't fully equipped to offer seamless experience so again it boils down to data and it boils down to an integrated thinking and it boils down to seamless experience and that's where brands have to measure up to uh, you know deliver absolutely absolutely anjali uh, you are giving me a lot of quotable quotes by the way social distancing does not mean emotional distancing thank you for that and yes coming up with the next one anjali all bfisi players today are heavily invested in digital ad tech and martech platforms how accelerated will this transition be due to the current situation and what is the kind of impact that it will it will have on data driven marketing uh all brands have been on their transformation journey at different legs of it maybe but covid has really helped us not only hasten that but also bridge the gaps wherever there were any now more than ever is a need to remain digitally connected with the customers be they prospects existing customers or even partners the entire ecosystem needs to be you know driven by data at the backbone of it um we follow what we call a completely customer segmentation oriented strategy uh followed by customized marketing such that we remain relevant and meaningful to our customers now all of these may sound like jargon but you know it uh, and some of the people who practice this appreciate uh you know the kind of wealth of information that can be derived from out of using uh your uh, data engines and algorithms uh, with or without the use of artificial intelligence and ma- machine learning tools yeah. uh, in in addition to that tools uh, marketing tools that are already in use which are like the dmp tools or targeting tools affinity marketing contextual targeting uh, and so on uh, for prospecting and for customized communication i think will all get dialed up uh because um in a situation where we are realizing that we cannot meet people face to face retail is completely down and close for many months uh, sorry couple of months and mm-hmm. one of the learnings you all had is that really a lot of the stuff that we indulge in is, has been so frivolous yeah. and how complete life is sitting at home uh with bare minimum essentials Mm-hmm. and you realize that you can actually conduct your life from the confines of your home and uh digitally through our devices mm-hmm. and that's the new norm we've got to accept that a part of it is going to continue forever yes so anjali what will be the next step in the evolution of say direct digital selling of plans and robo advisor so to speak i think as far as insurance is concerned i see a huge amount of change happening here i uh, know this is one industry which has always uh you know um it, if i may put it this way uh been a lot dependent on winning the trust of people which for which it is important to meet face to face and uh, uh substituting that in a physical interface with a digital medium is actually a big challenge Mm-hmm. as well as an opportunity as they say yeah. uh so we've seen for instance in the last few years chatbots evolving to audio bots now we've seen the emergence of video bots yeah uh, and uh, people actually have been experimenting in the last few weeks in our own company by actually doing short videos on whatsapp uh, just to connect with their customers and sending them out saying hey i'm there for you if you need me and uh, uh you know whether it be for advice or for anything else that you need and i think that's been a great way to show that we care we are there and uh, you can reach out to us if need be even though decisions are at hold but i think it's a great way in building engagement and trust uh but i think going forward it's not just about that it's about really 
turning that around into sales. We've had a very interesting B2B2C tool, uh, mm-hmm. which is actually a digital tool which uh, our advisors use when they connect with customers. But it helps build a digital experience. It's, it's administered through a tab or a, or a phone mm-hmm. and essentially walks the customers through the entire uh, journey from needs analysis to you know product selection to uh, buying to documentation everything in one single stretch mm-hmm. uh, we've been able to use that quite effectively in the last few weeks and thanks to that tool all of our business uh, has actually moved on to that mode oh. uh, we're now trying to build video onto it as well Okay. So there, are, there is some experimentation going on right now in terms of co-browsing solutions where advisor and customer can get onto the to a browser, see each other, talk to each other, and complete the journey together. So it's it's an exciting time about building some new stuff. But I think it's about innovation. It's about thinking out of the box, and some of those innovations are already in play, and I'm sure a lot more will play out. I think eventually it'll all settle down to robo advisory, uh, where the advice would be delivered by bots. You'd feel like it's a customer, but essentially it'd be an engine speaking to you, and um, uh, it, it'll get to that. You know, we talk, talk, keep speaking about artificial intelligence taking away jobs, but mm-hmm. artificial intelligence will actually effectively and efficiently doing the job that a human can do, and mm-hmm. it'll probably be a mix of those that'll that'll settle in for you know for giving uh, insurance advice. Absolutely, so, absolutely, Anjali, and. Uh, just to get my quotable quote in here, I think a tool in the hand of a fool doesn't work. So, yes, there is a good mix of automation, intelligence, artificial intelligence and human intelligence at play, which will ensure that there is customer success. Uh, coming to the last question, Anjali, how will customer experience management transform over the next couple of years and how will insurance players respond to this situation? So, uh you know, we all had business continuity plans in place, and uh, when the crisis happened, and the first thing was obviously you put your plan into action, except that this time it wouldn't work because most business continuity plans require you to operate from a, a secondary location, mm-hmm. and here there were no locations available at homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so business continuity plans had to be rewritten, and you know that's what uh, you know situations like this or events like this force us to do. We went back into rethinking mode and business continuity plans were rewritten for people working from home and surprisingly so uh, delivered pretty well uh, because all customer uh, processes, as I was saying earlier, have been uh, delivered all through this, not with some delay, albeit in some cases, Mm -hmm. uh, and not fully as we would in a full-time scenario, uh, but we've essentially kept basic services alive and that's been, I think, a great start. Uh, eventually, I think uh, it will be about newer solutions that will emerge about, uh, uh, you know, s- servicing customers. Uh, we've experimented with cloud telephony because, you know, obviously customer service agents were not able to get to office. Uh, so we, we were routing calls into their homes and we were able to actually do some of that. Uh, uh, we were we were also experimenting with, um, you know, say maybe video chats. Um, uh, or uh, on on online platforms. So those are the newer things that we see happening. Uh, you know, omni-channel experience is a buzzword, uh, mm-hmm. but brands have to appreciate that eventually uh, the customer can choose to reach us through any touch point, uh, and the number of touch points has really multiplied. It isn't just about the phone and the IVR and the SMS. It's so much more. It's bots. It's uh, WhatsApp. It's e-com platforms, and it's just a plethora of different ways to reach out to brands. And how do we really integrate all of that? Um, and and which is where the criticality of data, you know, because we've got to be able to find how data is updated at all points in time for all uh, touch points. We run this very interesting program called Ask It Once where you be essentially take a data from a customer only once okay. and make sure that you integrate it well enough so that it never needs to be asked again and should get pre-populated whenever required. It's, okay. It sounds simple, but yeah. really not that simple to achieve. Um, so I think we're on that journey um, and uh, thereby experimenting with some of these tools to make sure that we can give better experiences to customers. Absolutely. 
I think you mentioned a great initiative, Ask It Once. Uh, it's also, uh, uh, I was reading somewhere that it's put in place by the Czech government also, and they just ask for your information, all kinds of information that you need to do or get any government service only once. I think mm. they've done it pretty successfully out there. I think uh, very few brands in India are even thinking on the lines that you are. Uh, great talking to you, Anjali. Wishing you all the success. Uh, very best. Take care. Be safe. Thank you. Great to listen to your points of view. Thanks, Neera. It's been a pleasure. Stay home. Stay safe. Best of luck. Thank you.